Hey everybody, welcome to what's the re-recording of my talk I gave at the DevCon Cloud Bridge called Making the Most of Microsoft Making the Most of Microsoft Cloud Backbound Programs. So how I made 65k uh, in bounties in 2021. So uh, my name is Dr. Nestor Dudima, also known as Dr. Azure AD. And I think people know me best of my tool called AAD Internals, uh, which I've been uh, publishing since 2018. I'm a uh, senior principal security researcher at SecureWorks Counter Threat Unit. And what I do there is that I'm trying to find vulnerabilities from Microsoft Cloud before the bad guys do. So that's pretty much what I do. I'm also Max MVP and uh, one of the most valuable researchers they actually announced like that last week or in the first day of uh, Black Hat 2022. And actually there I am on the list and I'm on the I'm number 70. So that's my 70th place. Um, I've been working with MSRC now a couple of years, if you will, and uh, it, it, it has been nice. So for instance, they draw me a picture of me like that when when they did like a research uh, like a portfolio or research uh, interview if you will it's it's actually still there on the M msrc site and by the way msrc comes from the words micro security response center and also the people who are on on, on where it is that way on that list are invited to a party it's called MSRC Research Celebrity Party, where I was also also last, I think the other was Wednesday. So everybody who is on that list will get the invitation. So it's actually quite nice to be there. And by the way, that is this time at least it's top hundred. So so it was actually very nice to meet other other people in the in the or from from the research community. And also, they are following me on Twitter, and it's nice to see because they only have like uh, they are only following 75 people, including Satya and Natella, who is a, a CEO, yeah, CEO of Microsoft. So it's nice to be part of those. Uh, okay, uh, so before we go move forward uh, about about reporting bounties so people usually do that for three reasons so first one is obviously to get the bounty second one is to get points to be on that list so even though uh, not all bounties will uh, get sorry even though there are vulnerabilities not all are gonna get bounty but you are still having points and the third is like me that I just want to get things fixed so that's why I, I I've been doing this but hey, uh, let's let's move forward. So first of all, I I wanted to share with you the site where where you can see all the bounty programs. So you need to go to microsoft.com slash enus or whatever is your country and language slash msrc slash bounty. And here you actually have the list of programs and I've been working with Azure program, Identity program, and, and M365 program. And as you can see, the bounties, the highest bounty, at, at least now, is with uh, Microsoft Identity. So if you go here, you can see that, just scroll down, so here's the nice table. So if you can do the elevation of privilege, the, and it's secure, and it's high quality, you will get 100,000 bounty. And that's a lot. So my highest have been uh, 20,000, like a single one. So I, I, if I remember correctly, it came from this. But anyways, there are also like moderate or low severity bar, uh, vulnerabilities that won't get bounty, but you will get points. So I suggest you to always submit if you have something, regardless of the bounty. So please do that. So you will get points and you will get on that list eventually. 
if you're doing a lot of those those even moderate or low findings if you do a lot of those you will be on that list okay and if you look the other programs like m365 you can see that the bounties are a little bit lower but anyways these are very very, very nice addition to your like your pay salary okay but let's where's my slides that there is so oh okay here we go so i was planning originally like share uh, three cases with you but then i just i did uh, yeah, sorry i decided to share two bonus findings also because they are good stories so let's start with the uh, first one so uh, this is spoofing and tampering with Azure AD signing locks so very short uh, walkthrough about the vulnerability so I think it was about a year ago maybe maybe a little over a year but uh, ADFS health agent got an update uh, and the ADFS health agent is running on the ADFS servers and what it is well, one of the things it's, it is doing is that it will send all the signings what are made to or through ADFS. They will send those to Azure AD so that you can view them in Azure AD signing logs. And also you can use like uh, Sentinel to detect stuff because they are there. So when that agent was published, I kind of reverse engineered the protocols it is using to communicate to Azure AD and I was able to, you know, spoof uh, signing log events. But that was like uh, by design because that's how the protocol works. That's that's what what that agent was made to do. So there was nothing, nothing, uh, you know, there. However, I noticed that if uh, that one thing that was sent to Azure AD was a, a GUID, so it was an ID of that signing event. And if I was uh, using an existing ID that there already was in Azure AD signing log, I was able to override those those uh, signing events. So basically, you could change the IP address and, and person who signed in at that time. So uh, as a bad guy, Oh, sorry for the bad guys that that was a good feature because you were able to like uh, cover your your tracks anyways i reported it and, and got the 10k bounty and uh, takeaway from this story is that the new features often well i would say always have business logic vulnerabilities so whenever microsoft is pub publishing something new uh, it's a good chance for you to find things first so you just install that study how it works and there quite often there are business logic vulnerabilities like this and and it's kind of a easy easy way to get a great bounce okay then the second one so as already OSINT so uh, there's a thing called uh, Microsoft Support and Recovery Assistant or SARA that's a away from the text for a minute and that is a tool that is helped to analyze and fix problems if you have any problems to connect to Microsoft Cloud services like for instance if you can't read your email you just run the client and it will do some local analysis and also uh, submit certain information using APIs to the backend and then the backend is doing some checking and uh, I was able to find out that that those APIs did not uh, validate that the tenant ID or user ID I was sending there is the same than who, than who was logged in. So that allowed me to get information from other tenants. So I was able to, for instance, get any user's email uh, settings and uh, like license, licenses and, and so on so i reported that and and i originally found this this from a legacy endpoint that hasn't been used for a while but anyways uh, I, I get a 5k uh, bounty from that and 
they they fix that by disabling that cross cross tan access and actually the pretty much the whole endpoint. But there was another endpoint that the Sarah is currently using, and it still was like providing the same information. Like I was able to access information from other tenants, so I reported that too. So they finally like uh, fixed that. So they disabled the cross tenant access for good. So that's not anymore possible. But I know noticed that the like regular users, like normal users, can still get access from the home home tenant, uh, and that access was not meant for their eyes, like. Like, for instance, they were able to see uh, email uh, trust relationships between your tenant and, and the and, and other tenants. So that was like a, uh, another, another kind of bug, but I still reported that. And again, I got 5k bounty. So, but this time it, it was elevations privileged. So basically, uh, the takeaway for this is that you should submit, if you have multiple findings which are similar, so first send just one and not put everything in one post, just post one. And after the fix has been provided, then you can send another one. So the logic here is that if you got bounty for the first one, then you have to have a bounty also for the, for the second one. And also a tip that look for different categories, like first one was information disclosure. So even though that is fixed, there still might be something else, like in this case, privilege escalation. So that was also a quite nice uh, way to report stuff like three in a row. So I was able to triple the bounty for this. Okay, then the third one, and this is like uh, my biggest bounty ever. So, so originally this was by design, anyways. And then I finally I it ended up like to two twenty thousand uh, bounties. But let's walk through what what, what is this, what is this all about? Okay, so so this is a related to Azure AD Connect, and that is a um, service that is. Up, uh, sorry, it is synchronizing stuff from your on-prem AD to Azure AD, and that's the purpose of it, and, and, and nothing like a special there. Anyways, I was able to, again, like uh, reverse engineer the API it is using, so it's actually proprietary API, so it's not public API, and it's using binary XML. And the purpose of Azure AD Connect, as I said, was to synchronize users and, and it is allowed to edit those users which it has synchronized. It, it is allowed to delete those users. It's, it is allowed to uh, re reset passwords and so on. So, so anyways, I found out that there are two IDs. So there's a uh, source anchor and then there's a cloud anchor. The source anchor is users on-prem AD ID, and the cloud anchor is users Azure AD ID. And cloud only users doesn't have that source anchor at all. But I was able to find out that you can also use the cloud anchor to edit users. So I said that okay, this is the cloud anchor. I want to edit. I want to delete it, and so on, or I want to reset the password. And uh, and that shouldn't be allowed. But anyways, I was able to, you know, like uh, take over global admins even from the cloud because I was able to reset their passwords and um, even delete them. And then maybe do some extortion or, or ransom to the target organizations. Okay, I, did, I deleted all your admins, give me money or, and you will get them back. So that, that was the finding that that uh, I was able to do. Okay, so I um, reported that, and that was categorized by as by design. And I I had a ve very many like replays and contacts uh, with MSRC, uh, and actually there was a 
kind of a director from Microsoft. I, I knew and I I sent him an email that could you have, have a look at this? Because it really feels that if you're an on-prem admin, you shouldn't be able to delete stuff from cloud. So finally, they decided that, okay, yes, that is a real issue. And they, they provided me a, a 20K bounty. And uh, they fixed that. So I saw a tweet uh, of one of the product managers who tweeted that, okay, they have now fixed that. And I noticed that, that okay, actually, you can, so the, the fix was that there's a setting that global admin can turn on that, that it's something like a disable cloud only takeover or something like that. And you set that to true and that's it. And then I um, noticed that how they were, they fixed that. So it was actually part of the settings that the, the Azure AD connect user. So if you compromise that server, you will get the credentials and those credentials can be used to say change that setting. So basically you could just change that back to the original setting. So that was again possible. So I, I told him that and he said, oh, that's bad. And he said that they are going to reopen my previous case. So kind of like uh, they will get back to that. But I, I was like, no, no, you don't. So I submitted a new one, new report. Uh, on bypassing that fix and I get another 20k bounty and now it's fixed so it's really fixed now so that that you need to be global admin to be able to change that setting okay and the takeaways so uh, when they are providing a fix you should study that like very carefully and look that if there's anything like uh, you could go back and, 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 and bypass that and then look for things that exist independently like the flaw on changing these settings ha have been there like for years and i knew that you can change those settings as that user but there just wasn't like any use case for that but now there was so so um when this case was open they fixed that stuff i was able to like compromise that that has been there al already for years and also do not accept any reopening old cases because the old case was actually fixed so or the status was fixed the fix just didn't work so it's a different case so don't accept that and just post a new report new report and and you should be good to go okay then the first bonus okay so this was actually not found by me but this was found by an indian guy called ravan akaram uh, no write-up yet for this and um, a very short walkthrough. So access packages or Azure access, access packages are, are like um, it's, a, it's a service where you can apply access to certain services. Like uh, for instance, I want to have access to that team site or that SharePoint site. I want to access email and so on. And this is meant for people inside your organization, but also external like contractors. So by design, of course, it, it will show those uh, access packages that are meant for outsiders where you can actually apply to have those. And uh, we found out that the backend API actually allows external users to view all the packages and also metadata, including the people's names or actually uh, email addresses who created those access packages. So we reported that. Uh, well, actually, he, his original report was a quite large, and um, he had some problems with MSRC, and he was tweeting about that. And I told him that, okay, uh, based on what you show, I, I, I don't know if there really is anything, but if you can uh, DM me, we can work this out like together. And we actually ended up to submitting three different reports. So this is one of them, and and yeah. So MSRC found out, or they concluded that yes, there is a vulnerability, but it's moderate, so it's not severe enough. So let me show you the bounty program, and I think this was from Azure. Let's sure about that. Let's see. 
So, yes, so it was information disclosure, but it was moderate, so there was nothing. And we weren't that happy about that, because we think that that was quite severe. And actually, I looked into the documentation of that access packages, and I found out that only people who can actually create those packages are either a global administrators or user administrators. And this is actually literally what I told them that according to documentation it's like this, so it looks quite severe to me. And they re that and they raised the, the severity to important and, and he got actually that seven, seven and a half thousand bounty. So I, I didn't take any, any, any of that bounty, so it, it was his, so I just helped help him to, you know, argue with uh, MSRC. So takeaways from this is that uh, argue using your documentation. So if the documentation they have says something, then use that. And here it was quite really easy. So they were like uh, giving out global admin names, and that is bad thing. Of course, if they would have been like normal users, that might have been like it's not that like severe, but in this case it was. Now also remember that reporting moderate all low vulnerabilities still gives you point to get on that list and to that great part. So yeah, always report. Okay, then uh, the uh, second bonus, or was this the last one? Uh, yeah, this is the last one, yes. Yeah, the, the second bonus, yes. So, this is uh, Azure AD OSINT Part 2, okay? And this is one of the findings, well, it is that Microsoft has business partners, and those partners have a, a thing called Partner Center, where they can uh, manage their customers, and, and, you know, perform, like, administrative tasks, to their customers' tenants. But there was also a, a tool to find other partners. And I was able to uh, call that API also directly. And I noticed that you can uh, get not just information about the partner, but any organization. So if I just gave a tenant ID of any tenant, to that API, it pulled pulled out information from from that organization. So, so if you were just logged into your own tenant, you were able to get this organization information from any other tenant, regardless are they partners or not. And uh, that information includes the well, the full name and phone number of the uh, person who created that tenant, and that usually is a global admin. And I reported that, and they categorized that again as by design, so that this information is public anyway, so it's a, it's a good to be there. And that's it, so nothing argued there. But then something interesting ha happened when we published this, or disclosed this, the whole, whole thing. So we are writing threat analyses and report like these kind of findings, and like week after we disclosed this, Microsoft fixed the issue. And uh, I, I don't know why, so maybe some someone else like outside MSRC saw this and, and, and assessed that this is actually something that you shouldn't be able to do. So they reassessed my report and they found out that yes, this is actually information disclosure and it's a worth of $2,000. And let, 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 let us go back here, so I go back a bit and go through here, because this API was at microsoftoffice.com, uh, or office.com. And here I noticed that, okay, information disclosure, 2000 for medium report. And I was like, what the heck is this? So you are not happy with my work anymore? Okay, I didn't like that, so I asked them why. Uh, can you say the reasons why this is like a medium quality? And it took over two months 
So they were back and forth between the MSRC and the bounty program and then even the engineering. So they were saying that we didn't decide that and, and so on and so on. And, and, and finally, I was able to get an answer. And the answer was that, okay, we actually reassessed this that, and the quality was actually high. So so they decided to give me an extra $3,000 bounty. However, they haven't not paid that yet, so still waiting for that. Okay, and the takeaways from here. So if you feel that the assessment is not correct, ask for reasons for that. So, so you don't need to be mean to Microsoft. Don't be. You just want to know why, because for instance, me, I wanted to know that what was wrong with the report so that the next reports I will will create would be like a higher higher uh, higher quality but there was nothing wrong actually so I don't know why they ended up in this this like uh, assessment that that it was me but well you you never know uh, after the, to my talk I had a couple of questions and one of the questions was if I remember correctly that because I've been working with MSRC now a lo long time they they know me and uh, I I have a, like a good service if you will. So what about the newbies? So yeah, when I started reporting stuff, I didn't get that good, let's say, service. And uh, there are not that many people there who are triaging these kind of reports related to identity or Azure, for instance. And it's also important to understand that. For, for instance, this identity stuff that I'm researching, it's quite a niche area and there might be five people in the world who knows about that stuff and you are one. So there's only four left and usually they are not the one who are triaging your report. So it's important that you create a good POC or POC as in proof of concept so so that they it's easy for them to try. I, I usually well, because I'm doing that AAD internals toolkit, so that's written in uh, PowerShell. So I'm quite often using PowerShell script to to like uh, as a POC, so that they can just simply run the script and they can like uh, uh, rerun the the error or vulnerability whatever I I, I have found. And I think there was other questions too, but can't remember those those so uh, yeah I think that's it so hope you enjoyed this and if you have any questions just contact me on Twitter and I'm happy to help you okay